charged city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Pretty smart idea there, Mr. Jones. Oh, what do you mean, Chester? Well, fixing up the back of his wagon that way with that flare of pianos, that thing that drops down, makes a platform to stand on and feel at the crowd. That took some thinking to do to think of that. Well, he better go on thinking to figure out some new place to set it up. He's about to start his selling talk. Yeah. Oh, wait till he finishes. There will be more of that later, folks, but right now I'm going to let you in on the chance of a lifetime. I reckon we are moving a little bit uh, closer, Mr. Jones. I'm going to look close at this well, bottle I'm holding uh, in my hand because this bottle is going to change your whole blame life. For every single one of you, you're asking me why. And I'm going to tell you why. I didn't hear nobody ask Every one of these <laughs> bottles is filled right up to the court with old Dr. Walker's muscle, bone, blood, and nerve tonic. And if there's a man, a woman, or a child here that ain't ever heard of old Dr. Walker's muscle, bone, blood, and nerve tonic, let him speak right up now and display his picture. You heard of it, Chester? Well, oh, I... I... Tonight, you good people of Dodge City, opportunity is yours. Because it is my privilege to introduce, for the first time on the frontier, this famous elixir. This bottle dram of radiant health. This magic blend of 27, mind you, 27 powerful drugs and herbs. Many of them taken from the magic medical secrets of ancient Greece and Egypt. Mm, he sure does get a lot of it, don't he? Listen now. Tonight only to the first 20 of you who step up here, I will give the unheard of opportunity of buying a new life for the unbelievable and insignificant sum of only one dollar. One silver dollar. Now, who will be first? I'll take it. You going to tell him now, Mr. Jones? Now, wait till he finishes with his customers here. Well, if you know, yeah. Could I buy a dollar to pay them? Just a minute, sir. I have to get you a bottle out of the wagon. Uh, no, I, I'm not a customer. My name's Dillon, Matt Dillon. I, uh, I'm a U.S. Marshal here in Dodge. Oh, I see. Well, uh, it it's the law, Meg. Law? Oh. My name is Hart Finney, Marshal. Meg, this is Marshal Dillon. This is my wife. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. What do you want with us? Now, Meg, Meg. Marshal, I, I know how some of these tonics people sell are, but this one of mine is different. I swear to that. Well, that's not quite what I mean. I had bad health, Marshal. That's why we had to leave Virginia and take up this kind of work. Live out in the open, the doctor said. And I'll tell you, I've been taking this tonic myself regularly. And it helps, too. I, 
I feel a dang sight better than I ever did. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Mr. And the Thank price you. ain't out of line either. It cost me 60 cents a bottle of cash laid down in Kansas City. And if that's... Uh, uh, wait just a minute, Mr. I am not here because of this medicine you're selling. It's, uh... Well, it's the spot that you picked to sell it on. This place? Mm-hmm. Well, what's the matter with it? It's common held land, ain't it? Oh, uh, no. It belongs to a man named Grant Medford, uh... A wound keeper here in Dodge. But I asked a couple of people, and they said it was the public. There's even a well on it, everybody. You well, I know. Uh, people have uh, gotten kind of into the habit of thinking of it as public property, but it isn't. Grant Medford took it up under the Homestead Act quite a few years back. He just hasn't gotten around to proving it up yet. Oh. But now he's aiming to. Is that it? All of a sudden. Right this week. Hmm? Well, I wouldn't know. He still got a right to keep trespassers off, though. So he's uh, filed a legal complaint, Mr. Fenney. Oh, it ain't like I was hurting the property, none, Marshal. And I'm only going to be here less than a week just as my stock is gone. I got no choice, Mr. Fenney. I got to serve this notice on you. It's the only vacant ground around that's close to the saloons and eating places where a lot of people come by. I'm sorry. You're telling us to get, is that it? Yeah, I'm afraid so, Mr. Fenney. I can give you till morning. And that's all. Marshal, I'm a reasonable man when I'm treated reasonable. It, it ain't you, I mean. You've got your duty to do. But this fellow Medford, well, he sounds mighty selfish. And I don't like a selfish man. No, Marshal. I'm not hurting a thing. I'm staying. I'm sorry, Mr. Funny, but the law says you can't. And what do you say? Well, I'm a law man. <laughs> Rye whiskey there, Kitty. This one? Yeah. Why don't you just set it here on the bar? Sure. Why not? Go ahead. Pour it yourself, Mr. Nestor. Well, I got to see what my competitors are serving, don't I? Evening, Kitty. How are you, Matt? <laughs> well, good evening, Marshal. Have a drink? Uh, not right now. Thanks, my friend. Yeah. Uh, did you get rid of them trespassers for me? They'll be leaving in the morning. In the morning? Why didn't you boot them out tonight? That won't hurt anything to let them stay the morning. Of course, I might be persuaded to let that woman of his stay around as long as she wants. He's a mighty good looker. Look, Medford, uh, this man Finney seems to be pretty decent and honest. He's heading out for Kansas City as soon as he gets rid of his stock. It wouldn't hurt you any to let him stay out the week, would it? Well, now, I reckon you did see that woman all right. Sweet talk, you did she? That's enough, Mr. Marshal, I signed a trespassing complaint, ain't that right? Yeah, you did. Well, then, why don't you just go serve it? You're always talking so all fired holy about upholding the law. It's been served, Mr. and I'm just trying to give you a chance to do something for somebody for once in your life. You get them two out of there, Marshal. If you ain't man enough, then me and the boys will come around and do it for you. You and your boys book your noses into my bills and I'll knock your heads together. Is that clear? I have nothing more to say to you. Wait a minute, Mr. Medford. You owe me a dollar for those drinks. A dollar? Well, at my place, you can get four drinks for a dollar. Sure, but we buy our liquor. We don't make it in the back room. Nah. <laughs> well, now, Matt. <laughs> what seems to be the trouble in you ought to know, Doc. You and Chester have been standing there hanging on every word, flapping your ears like a pair of jackasses. Oh, well, now, don't you go taking it out on us just because you're riled up at Grant Medford. That man's got me riled up, too, Doc. Well, uh, by all rights, I ought to be trying to run this Finney out of town myself. You know, he's going to hurt my practice if that stuff makes everybody as healthy as he claims it will. I notice you bought a bottle from him yourself, Doc. 
I did. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Yes, yes. Well, I was... Like I was seeing the chest, I wanted to find out what was in it, you understand. See if it was harmful or not, that's all. If you ask me, it ain't nothing harmful about it. I bought myself two pints of it. Oh, yes, you would. You drink anything as long as you put it up in a bottle. Well, uh, just the same, Doc. It's got a mighty pleasant taste to it. It ought to. It's 20% alcohol. See, man, Grant Medford's a cheap, crooked skin. And everybody in town knows it. Now then, why don't you just tear up that ward and forget about it? I can't do that, Doc. The pennies will have to pull out. First thing in the morning. I don't know where he is. And I ain't lying to you, Marshal. I didn't say you were, Miss Finney. I, I tell you if I know, but I just don't know. At least not exactly. Well, he must have told you something before he left, didn't he? Well, sure he did. Just like I said, you're to work here until he gets back. Now, he knew the two of you were to be off this property the first thing this morning. Oh, he knowed it, all right. He'll be here. Any minute now, Marshal. Miss Honey, how do you know he'll be here if you don't even know where he went? I didn't say that. I said I didn't know where he was right this minute. Then tell me where he went. I can't tell you, Marshal. Hart said not to. He said he'd explain you all about it himself. And everything Hart says me to do, I do. Look, ma'am, I know loyalty is a fine thing, but I served an eviction notice on you two last night, and you've got to abide by it. Your feelings are, well, mine either, don't care. It's all right, Marshal, it's all right. She was only doing what she was going to. Why the bad, honey? Who would have seen that judge of yours? What's his name? Uh, judge Ben? Yeah, that's Judge Ben. He's a mighty fine man. Open-minded and fair. Knows the law, too. Uh, well, he gave me a paper here, Marshal. I reckon maybe you ought to take a look at it. Uh-huh. Can't kind of think something like this ought to hold up. Provided, of course, you're a mind to enforce the law of the same throughout of town as you do for dark city state. The man's right. It's right, Mr. Penny, no matter where he comes from. Then you will back up this here piece of paper? Well, it might take some doing. Grant Medford's a hard man, and he's got some mighty tough boys working for him. Marshal, maybe the law here can't be bought out. But could it maybe get scared out? Why don't you just wait, Mr. Penny, and you'll see. <laughs> See none of Medford's boys in that crowd, Mr. Dillon? Uh, he'll bring them with him, Chester, whenever he gets himself All right, worked folks, up. Quiet down now. I want your undivided attention, if you please. Now, in just a few short minutes, I'm going to open the doors of opportunity to one and all of you once again. And while you're waiting, my good wife, Meg, will put a new role in the piano. <laughs> all right, Meg. Give the good folks a little too. Hello, Matt. Chester. Hi, Doc. You ought to have brought yourself a little extra help. Grant Mentor will have eight or ten men with him. I told him the same thing. They are almost right, Doc. He's got nine men with him. Yeah? What do you find, sir? Oh, oh. Mm, yes, my God. There they come. Marshal. Marshal. He's coming down the street there. I figured I'd better strap my gun on and come down here and help you. Uh, you can unstrap it, Mr. Finney, and get back over to that wagon and run your show. I ain't never asked another man to fight my battles yet. Now, well, this case is the law fighting. Go on now. You get into this with a gun in your belt. It's the same as asking for a shooting. So you stay out of it. All right, Marshal. Come on, Chester. We'll walk out to the street and meet him. Yes, sir. You stay out of it, too, Doc. I will in a pig's eye. Old Medford looks mighty upset, Mr. Dillon. Well, I imagine he is. He's had all day to get that way. What's the meaning of this, Marshal? All right, that's far enough, you men. How come you ain't enforced that warrant, Marshal? How come you didn't kick these trespassers off my property? 
I'm afraid it'll be against the law, Medford. Against the law? It turns out it's not your property after all. What are you talking about? The fact that Hart Fenny and Judge Bent put their heads together this morning and came up with a writ of injunction. Yeah, you can take a look at it if you want. Seems this ground's public domain. What kind of finagling you trying to pull off? I took up this land eight years ago. That's right, Medford. But you didn't build on it and you didn't prove it up. And according to Judge Bent, unimproved land that's left open to public use without protest for five years or more reverts to public domain. Judge Bent's out of his mind. That well over there has been used by everybody in town for the last six years. And Judge Bent figures that's plenty of public use to wipe out your claim to the title. You hear that, boy? Shyster Carnival Barker turns out to be a squatter. A low-down land grabber. Now, wait a minute, Medford. Fenny hasn't grabbed anything. Now he's got the law stringing along with him. Boy, maybe, or... Perhaps he got that pretty-faced wife of his to sweet-talk the Now, I warned you about that once, my good. All right, come on, get up. You're not hurt that bad. Sure, Marshal. I... I talk big, too. I was a gunslinger. Talking to a businessman I knew couldn't begin to outdraw me. Uh huh. You got some kind of suggestion you want to make? Sure. Sure, you take off that gun. I'll break in two. Chester. Chester? First one of Medford's men that makes a move blow a hole in him with that shotgun. Yes, sir, Mr. Dill. Here, Doug. Huh? Oh, my gun belt with him. I sure will, man. All right, Mr. Method. Start breaking. I'm ready. I've been waiting for a chance like this. Watch out for his spurs, man. Have you had enough, Medford? I'll kill you. I help me, I'll kill you. All right. All right. All right. You men who work for him. Any of you want to take up where he left off? Then pack him down the street and soak him in that horse trough. He can't lie here all night. Go on. We're both mighty grateful to you, Mark. Ah, oh, forget it, Mr. Tony. It would happen sooner or later, even if you hadn't been here. He's got to come for a long time. He certainly has, Matt, and you gave it to him. Good. You know, Mr. Finney, you better grab onto this crowd and sell them some tonic before they start drifting away. My golly, you were right. <laughs> Thanks again. All right, folks. That's the right folks now. Here's a big chance you've all been facing. Move up. Move up just to the closer. Well, looks like Dodge has got itself a new municipal park, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Looks like we're going to be well, civilized around here for you know it, Mr. Jones. <laughs> we sure are, Chester. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me, boys. Uh, i got to get me uh, some more of that stuff. You're still testing it, Doc? Well, of course. What else would I be doing? Hey, uh, tell me something, would you? Tell you what? You sure that stuff's only 20% alcohol? <laughs> Thank you, George. You know, it was just five years ago this month that uh, Matt Dillon, Chester, Kitty, and Doc first walked along the plaza in Dodge City, Kansas. 
And there's one very good reason why you still find them living there in that wild camp at the edge of the high plains. CBS Radio's listeners seem to want it that way. It's our feeling that perhaps no period in American history has given birth to so many giants, legendary or historical, as those fabulous frontier years. We like to think that Gunsmoke has had a part in portraying it. We've tried for as much truth as good drama will allow and as research will furnish. And we like to think also that radio brings you the full flavor of this old West. Matt Dillon's little asides to Chester Proudfoot can conjure up vivid pictures of, oh, the Kansas Plains, the sod huts, the great herds of Texas cattle, the heat, the mud, the buffalo skinners, and the lonely ranging bands of Indians, all of which have long since vanished from the American scene. So, uh, on this, our fifth anniversary, may we sincerely thank you for your interest, which, after all, made the whole thing possible. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The Gunsmoke theme was composed by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Vic Perrin, and Virginia Gregg. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. William Conrad, co-starring with Academy Award winner Anthony Quinn, may soon be seen in his own production of The Ride Back for the Associates and Aldrich, a United Artists release. Join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. 